Now what have we here? This is Crusader Kings 3, a game I'm sure many of you know and love. However, this is set in Japan. You see, the actual map for CK3 doesn't go all the way to Japan. And on top of that, the time span of the game wouldn't go far enough in time for you to participate in a period like the Sengoku Jidai, if Japan were in the game. This has left it up to a terrific mod team to create the ultimate samurai mod for CK3. Not simply adding Japan to the already existing map in the game, but making an entirely new map focusing solely on Japan. This is the Shogunate mod. But don't let the name confuse you, I am not connected to the project at all, we just share a name. Regardless though, this really is one of the greatest mods I have ever played, up there with the likes of the Gekko Kujo mod for Mountain Blade, and I would like to take the time today to show it off a bit. If you remember way back to that video I made years ago now talking about some ideas for what the perfect samurai game may look like, one of the ideas I mentioned was one that took concepts from CK3 and other prominent games like the Nobunaga's Ambition series and even a bit of Shogun 2 to all come together to make the greatest samurai strategy experience ever. Well, of course, this mod doesn't really have the aspects of Nobunaga's Ambition or Shogun 2, but it does give us an awesome lens of if we had a samurai game using the same great systems present in CK3. And I know, some of you might be remembering Paradox's actual attempt to make a samurai strategy game in Sengoku. But for a lot of people, Sengoku kind of just misses the mark, and personally, I've always found it way too clunky to ever get into fully. The idea of a proper samurai grand strategy game is something that has always been really interesting to me. Playing more simple games like Total War Shogun 2 a ton when I was younger, and then playing a bit more complicated Nobunaga's Ambition when I was older, there is just so much that I feel can be done with the setting. As a massive fan of another Paradox title, Hearts of Iron 4, I even tried to make my very own samurai mod for that, which would span from 1582 onwards encompassing the last violent years of the Sengoku era. And although I got pretty far with the mod on my own, as you can see from the pictures I managed to find of it, sadly, when the most recent Hearts of Iron 4 expansion came out and completely updated a ton of the core systems, it utterly broke my mod, and I have really no way on my own to know how to fix the many problems it now runs into when I try to launch it. I wish I could find more pictures to show it off, especially of the entire map, because the last thing I managed to finish on it was adding in all the clans and leaders. Hopefully one day I'll be able to return to it. But this brings us to another amazing mod right here, the Shogunate mod for CK3, which, once again, I'm going to reiterate that my channel is not connected to in any way. All credit goes to its amazing developers. The Shogunate mod brings everything you love about CK3 and fits it all seamlessly into the setting of pre-modern Japan. I've actually known about this mod for quite some time now, but had avoided it due to the fact that it seemed for a while it just was not compatible with the current state of CK3. But that's all resolved now, and everything is fully playable and up to date. My first experience really diving into it was just a few weeks ago when I joined my good friend Triple Z Hacker over on his channel for a stream of the game. And oh boy, was it a great time, as I played as the Imagawa and marched Yoshimoto all the way to Kyoto. I am the Shogun. You are now the Shogun mighty Shogun. Banzai. Oh, look at that. The Imagawa, the Imagawa Shogunet. Uh, That's it. There you go, accept that. Watch. There we go. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Now I'm under the Imagawa as well. <laughs> Imagawa <laughs> Shogun. Shogun. But I still have all my territory and stuff because of Dante are here. Since then, I've been experimenting more and more with it, marveling at all the great features it has to offer. To begin with, this mod has an amazing amount of start dates, ranging all the way back to the Genpei War, but really focusing a ton throughout the Onin War and Sengoku period. This allows you to really start at whatever scenario you want. Do you want to complete Takeda Shingen's goal of defeating the Oda? Go for it. Do you want to become a proper Shogun as Akechi Mitsuhide? The power is in your hands. There is just so much you can do, especially given the fact that, of course, you can play as a minor vassal as well. You can even create your own character and clan fully, an awesome staple feature that's now in CK3. The footage I am showing you here is of me just having a leisurely playthrough as the Oda, starting in 1568. Basically, I wanted to recreate Nobunaga's famous march on Kyoto. 
This start date puts you immediately at war with the Ashikaga Shogunate and the Rokaku clan, so really the way is paved for you. And through this start date and playing as the Oda, I am really able to explore a ton of the great features this mod has to offer, and I know there is likely so much more that I haven't seen. One thing you might notice right away is how immersive it is in terms of its visuals, overhauling much of the artwork to put in images of pre-modern Japan. Castles look like samurai castles, units look like samurai and ashigaru, and the actual character models themselves look amazing with all new Japanese wardrobe just for the mod. This also extends into the brilliantly designed royal court mechanics that must have been completely reanimated by the modders. It just looks and feels so good, especially given the fact that these are all real historical figures you are dealing with. Granted, not everything is updated yet, as armies on the map still have not been made into samurai, and some of the other artwork is still from the base game. But these are all things I am confident will be updated in time. And then of course, we can start factoring in all of the other great additions that CK3 brings in. Things that are sort of in other samurai games, but really are just made all the better by CK3's great systems. Religion and culture being both huge staples that really make things more dynamic. Especially if you want to try your hand at following the Jodo Shinshu faith of the Ikoiki, or perhaps play as one of the Ainu factions. There is also the added factor of family lineage, showing which historical family your clan is descended from. The Taira, Minamoto, or Fujiwara. And obviously, I can't forget to mention the way that the mod goes about establishing the Sengoku era, using mechanics I believe were brought in with CK3's The Fate of Iberia update. This feature really helps to bring you into the wider conflict, giving you unique decisions for taking advantage of the chaos and growing your clan. Like I said, there is probably so much more I could get into, but these are all some of the awesome new things CK3 and this mod bring with them that we have not really seen so in depth in other games. Yet there are some minor things that I feel this mod could also improve on, specifically in terms of inheritance and expansion. What is nice is that it appears every clan starts off with the succession laws that pass all territory onto your firstborn son. This avoids any of your territory being split up or lost upon your current leader's death, as everything passes on to your heir. Yet although starting with this already unlocked and applied does feel good, and would be a samurai family's succession working as intended, it does cause some issues. It gives you this great sense of safety, allowing you to really expand endlessly without a care in the world, as it immediately removes one of the core challenges of the game. But on top of that, it also isn't necessarily true to history. Throughout the Sengoku Jidai, there were plenty of times where succession disputes would erupt into violent civil wars that tore entire clans apart. Famous examples of situations like this occurred to the Oda, Uesugi, and Imagawa. There are also examples of times sons would even rebel against their father to take over, as which happened with families like the Takeda, Saito, and even Date. These types of power plays were so common and feared that famous leaders like Morimoto Nari worked hard to secure that his three sons each took up great positions and would not seek to topple one another, ensuring the strength of the Mori remained for years to come. The fact that you don't need to worry about succession whatsoever allows you to grow your clan much more easily without constantly having to be concerned about it. This is most evident when you start as a major clan from the get-go, as you reach a point rather quickly where you just start snowballing into the most powerful force in Japan with very little to threaten you. For this reason, you may find it more fun to play as a minor clan or vassal family, just for the added challenge. But anyway, as you can see, this is an amazing mod. Not only is it awesome to see what CK3 looks like in samurai form, but also gives us a bit of a glimpse of what if Paradox was to ever revisit Japan for a Sengoku 2 maybe. There are also a ton of other comparisons you could make to the Nobunaga's Ambition series if you want. Though both are very different, they are of course both grand strategy games. And while I personally feel Nobunaga's Ambition is still the greatest solo player experience for a strategy game set in the Samurai era, what makes this mod so worthwhile is the fact that it does have multiplayer, something Nobunaga's Ambition does not, or at least not yet. I've had a blast playing this online with friends, and I could very easily see myself organizing community events on it in the future. It would be awesome to get a ton of people on playing different clans or vassals. Just imagine the Sengoku chaos we could cause. Yet, with that said, what do you think? Does this mod look cool to you? Have you already played it? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll be leaving a link to the Steam Workshop page down below where you can get it and play it for yourself if you haven't already. Just remember, you'll still need a copy of Crusader Kings 3. 
So, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most interesting.